Hello everyone, this is Cory from Hey Poor Player, bringing a little guide to Genshin's newest event. I'll be looking at all the dungeons and easy ways to conquer them. The goal of these dungeons is to activate three runes to access the final challenge. These runes are scattered around the map and the ones you're after will have a red beam of light shining skyward. When you activate them, you'll have some enemies to defeat. Red rune challenges give no buffs, but you can do extra challenges for assorted buffs, as displayed here in the image. You'll have 15 minutes per dungeon, but you can increase that by doing other non-red rune related challenges. Along the way, you'll come across some turrets that are usually charged by an element. An element that will cause a reaction should be used, so electro to fire for overload, or water to electro for electrocharged, and so on. Now, unlike other events, you aren't taking your characters in there. You'll have eight characters to choose from, all with their own upgraded weapons, talents, and artifacts. As for Constellation, if you have that character, it'll base its Constellation off your character's Constellation. But if you don't, the Constellation will be set for zero. All dungeons give buffs to something from the get-go. For example, the Healing Dungeon gives a bonus to healing, and the Plunge Dungeon will give you a damage buff to plunge attacks. There's also challenges to do that'll give rewards like Mora or Primo Gems that encourage you to make the most of these buffs. You'll also need to keep an eye out on what enemies you'll be facing. As you can see here, this challenge in particular will have Geobshaps, Pyroslinger Bracers, and Geochanter Bracers. For the Pyroslingers, you're going to want somebody that does water damage, like Bona or Barbara. If you have somebody that requires Geo damage, like the Geobshaps or the Geochanters, you're going to need someone like Albedo or Noel. The healing dungeon is fairly self-explanatory. Keep Barbara or Diona with you and remember to apply your healing both in and out of battle, and you'll do fine with that. The final challenge for this dungeon has two Metatrills and a Pyro Abyss Mage, which are relatively easy to handle. Keep your healing up and the rewards will be easy pickings. As for the plunge dungeon... Plungin. That's a word now. There's a couple ways to get that plunge damage to skyrocket. First way, and the easiest, most straightforward, is to hit one of the windstones that'll be in the runes. There are always going to be at least two of them near the runes in that room. You hit it, and it'll make a little gust of wind that you can use your glider to get up, take off, and then wait till all the enemies are down below before you go screaming down with your blade. But what if you accidentally pop that stone before you could get to use it? There's a couple other ways to elevate yourself above the competition. One way is to use Albedo's Flower, which, when stood upon, will lift you up in the air. But my personal favorite is to use Kaching's Lightning Stiletto, aim it straight to the sky, and teleport up there. That usually gives a good brief period where she is just hanging in the air, which gives the enemies plenty of time to gather around near the bottom. And it's a little more directable. Final challenge has some treasure hoarders, an Electro Sisson Mage, and a Fatui Agent. Keep up with your plunges for the treasure hoarders to take them all out swiftly, then lay into the mage and agent whenever they're apart. Mona's decoy can aggro them together if you want to plunge on them too, but you could definitely get by with just beating them up like normal. Now for the melee dungeon. This one's pretty cut and dry. Make absolutely sure you bring at least one Claymore user. I personally went with Noel and Jinyan, but your call which ones you prefer, though. I'd advise Jinyan just on her ability to burn through shields and thorny bramble, as well as granting a shield in the process. You'll need them for the shield wall Minichurl, the stonehide lava churl, and the geochanter bracer. For the hydra gunners, you're probably gonna want to take Diona to freeze them, and for the pyro abyss mage, bring along either Mona or Barbara. Though personally, I recommend Mona just on her ability to make a decoy to draw aggro. The final dungeon for this has the Stonehide Lava Churl and the Stonewall Mita Churl. Keep pummeling them with Claymore and Geo if you got it, and this fight won't be much harder than anything you've faced before. For the range dungeon, this gets a bit complicated, but I found a good winning formula using Mona and Diona. Draw them in with Mona's decoy, then blast them with Diona's elemental skill. Or if you really want to put the hurt on them from afar, save up Diona's elemental burst and you can get a whole AoE of freezing people solid. Normally I'd give recommendations on who to carry for elemental weaknesses, but most of the enemies are elementally neutral, so just focus on keeping them frozen and keeping at least one person as a designated DPS, if whatever you're shooting at doesn't want to stay still. The final challenge for this has a single Ruin Grater. Now, normally you'd want to focus on attacking his eye, but I've found much better success using a Claymore or a sword and hacking at his legs to knock him down. If your aim is crap like mine, 
Just keep it frozen and keep hitting it where it hurts. The shield dungeon is where I found the most trouble. Geo can do good damage to Pyro and Cryo Mages, but if you want to aim for elemental weaknesses, Mona or Barbara for the Pyro and Jinyan for the Cryo. As for the Giavis Shaps and the Stonehide Lava Troll, just keep up with Claymore and Geo. You're going to want two shielders for this at the minimum, so Jinyan, Noel, Baido, and Diona will all be good substitutes. Albedo can work for Geo, but at that point you're better off with Noel since she has a shield that she can proc whenever she wants as long as it isn't on cooldown. Just as you do with healing, don't hesitate to swap out and swap often to whoever's got their shield ready. Even if you don't think you need it, drop a shield anyway. Better safe than sorry down here. And for the love of all that is good, if you are running Mona in this, do not let her get hit by anything. Shield first, then use her decoys. Otherwise, she's going to take some damage. The final, dun the final dungeon here is similar to the melee one, just with a Giavashap hatchling instead of a stonewall metatrol. Same rules as before, keep shielded so you don't get blindsided by that hatchling and you shouldn't have any problems. And now for the final dungeon, Elemental, and my personal favorite. I could give you a long-winded tutorial here, but honestly, elemental reactions are so overpowered here that even Electro will give you no trouble at all with killing dang near anything in this dungeon. Feel free to mix and match to whichever elements you play best with, and, and go to town with their skills and bursts. Don't hesitate to spam. If you really need the advice, shoot for Vaporize and Melt reactions. Those have been pretty well proven in the community to be the hardest hitters of the elemental reactions. The final dungeon here are two Ruin Guards. No fancy tricks, no extra nonsense. Treat them like you would in the overworld, don't stray too far, look out for them to start spinning, and shove every element you can their way and you'll see this through to the end with hardly a scratch. And that is all for now folks, a big thank you for watching and stay tuned for more of the latest in gaming. This is Cory from Hey Poor Players, signing off.